Hello, you guys. Welcome back to our channel. I am Cheryl. And I'm Jesse. And we are Canadian expats mm -hmm. who live in Amsterdam. And we film all about our expat life here in the Netherlands as well as our travels around Europe. So today we're sitting down because we came back recently from our ski trip. Yes. And we went to Morzine in France uh, for a week long. And yeah, we had so much fun that we thought that we would sit down and kind of talk in retrospective how our experience was yeah. traveling there, going skiing, and uh, all the memories we made with our friends. Exactly. We wanted to be really present during the trip, and we were also with friends, so we didn't necessarily like do a vlog style while we were there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyways, let's get into it. Because it was our first time skiing, we are both like native, you can even call that native snowboarders. Yeah. We've been snowboarding our whole like teenage life in Vancouver, um, and so, we both wanted to try mm -hmm. out skiing as we are getting older. We're like, maybe it's better <laughs> on our knees to try out skiing. So um, we decided that on this trip, we are going to practice skiing. And before we went on this trip, we one of the friends that we actually went to Morzine with, she used to be a ski instructor. Yeah. And yeah, you might be wondering, how can you practice skiing when you live in flat Netherlands? Um, the good thing is they have a lot of indoor ski houses, let's call them ski houses, yeah. uh, specifically Snow World. And that's where we went before the trip to like learn how to ski, um, which is really helpful, I, I would say. Like if you've never skied before or never snowboarded before as well, yeah. it's nice to ha get a sense of feeling what it feels like to go down a slope yeah. before you actually are going down a slope on a real mountain. So highly recommended if it's possible for you to get some lessons before you are actually on your real ski trip. Yeah. And then you can enjoy the trip a little bit more. So it's called Snow World. And I think there's like around two locations around Amsterdam. So I would just look it up on Google and you'll see the different ones around. The one that we went to had like a baby, like a, ba a bunny run, and then like a regular, well, very short, mm -hmm. like very green run. Um, and so it was a great way to kind of practice and yeah. also get into the spirit of the cabin life because it was all decorated really nice yeah. into like this little cozy cabin with like um, ski food and stuff. So it was really cute. So I highly recommend just like, even in the summertime, I feel like it might mm -hmm. be kind of fun to like go there to cool down and stuff. But yeah, we definitely practiced a lot, yeah. learned all of our basic ski techniques there, and we felt kind of confident yeah, going at least to Marzine. Yeah. yeah. And that leads us to our first day in France. Yeah, so I think before <laughs> we even, the day, the couple of days before we left for the trip, we were checking the weather reports because we were going to Marzine, and we were, get, we were a little worried because um, the weather report showed that it was really warm, and there was absolutely no snow in the city of Morzine. Yeah, and if you're going on a ski trip, you want lots of fluffy snow, especially as first timers on anything skiing or snowboarding. The fluffier the mountains, the less impact it will be when you're actually skiing, but also um, if you fall. <laughs> yeah. So ultimately, we left it to fate. We trusted the weather gods that yeah. there will be snow when we show up to Morzine <laughs> and we go skiing uh, during our ski trip. Yeah. So anyways, um, day one, uh, what, where did we begin? It was a really early flight. Oh my god. So we strategically booked like a 10 a.m. flight originally. Yeah. But that flight got canceled and all, all of us got rebooked on an earlier flight at yeah. 7 a.m. Luckily, it is like a direct flight from Amsterdam to Geneva. Um, Geneva's in Switzerland, yeah. right? So it was a rather short flight. So while it was super early in the morning, at least it was like a short distance that yeah. we were expect yeah. expected to be on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. However, <laughs> on the morning of, you know, we got there early, got on, got on board the plane at 4, 7 a.m. Yeah. And then I think the moment I sat down, I closed my eye because I usually just sleep on an early flight. Yeah. And I woke up probably an hour later, expecting we'll be like 80% there. there. And I'm like, I look around like, wait, the plane's not moving. We're still on the tarmac. Like, I'm what's like, happening? we haven't left yet, Jesse. We're still on the same spot an hour ago. Yeah, so then the, I guess the, the pilot told the, the, the whole plane that there was a mechanical issue. So we have to go to another plane. And this is oh. like t almost two hours at this point after we were supposed to depart. So yeah. then by like 9.30, when we got onto the new flight, that's when we finally took off. And so, yeah, so we pretty much got our original time slot back, but then but we had to wake up a lot earlier. Yeah. <laughs> so 
so that kind of sucked. Um, but it's okay. Again, it was a short flight. So once we got there, um, I guess, I guess we... safety first, right? At least they caught the mechanical issue true, before true, you're true, in true. the air, right? So yeah, very good point. Um, but yeah, once we landed, uh, it was nice and sunny in Geneva at the airport. Yeah. And there's two options of how you can get to Morazine from Geneva. You can take a, I guess, a Greyhound or a bus which we didn't want to do I am because Cheryl not gets, a bus gets uh, car sick easily. <laughs> yeah. So the other natural option was renting a car, which yeah. we rented a big van for all, how many, how many of us were there? Six people? Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Yeah, six people. Five. Six, six, six. Six? Oh yeah, six, yeah, people. six people. So yeah, we had a big van for six people. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, the drive was really short and quick. Yeah. Uh, if you drive relatively fast, you can get there between one hour and 15, but mm -hmm. we took it slow one hour and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a bit windy, some it of the roads. It is super windy. As someone who gets motion sick, motion sick like easily, um, yeah, I would recommend either being the driver, uh, which I didn't. Jesse was the driver this time. Mm -hmm. um, or just like taking it slow once you get to the very end of the trip because up that Morzine Mountain, oh my gosh, it was windy as hell. Mm -hmm. So yeah, one and a half hours later in the car, we're there and you'll see in the clips that, hey, how could you possibly be skiing because it's like bright and sunny, yeah. barely any snow on the road. Not even, the roads warm, weren't even icy actually. at all. Yeah, it was warm. We thought it was warmer than Amsterdam. It was kind of warmer than Amsterdam because it wasn't very windy and Amsterdam gets really windy. So you feel the chill more. Yeah. So yeah, we got there. Yeah, we'll play some clips of the chalet, which was absolutely beautiful yeah. we had more than enough space for the six of us yeah it was uh, awesome yeah. it was so cozy and like i'm so glad we got that cabin it was definitely like not cheap um we spent like a couple hundred per person for the four nights there yeah um yeah, yeah. so because we were there for like a little bit longer than you know some of our other trips in the past like it did add up pretty quickly but the best <laughs> part of the chalet is like you know, the chalet is nice it's really comfortable beds yeah. are comfortable um, it's also right beside the gondola yeah. that takes you up to the mountain to go skiing. It was like a five minute walk into the village where the gondola is. Yeah, yeah. you can see it from our house. So yeah, that was a big perk. Like but on the first day, spot. we didn't go skiing. We no. got there in the afternoon and we decided as a group, let's take it easy. Let's get yeah. ourselves acquainted with the city. So uh -huh. we had a, our first meal at a restaurant. We'll put the name of the restaurant on the screen. Yeah. Uh, it was our First French meal of the trip. It was really good. It was heavy. We got some pasta and like some salad and a steak, I think just yeah. ordered a steak. It was really good. It was tasty and it was like, oh my gosh, we're finally having French food again. Exactly. Like um, being in Amsterdam, I think we really, really miss the French foods. And this was just like, it wasn't like one of the top restaurants. It was not expensive means. either. We just like kind of picked a random one off the street that had like space without reservation yeah. and it was really great. It wasn't expensive, good qualities, yeah. Just typical mountain food in France. Um, yeah. But yeah, so afterwards we went grocery shopping because, you know, we, we thought that eating out every meal for the week would make us really like, not also feel heavy, but it's like too much, too much for us. Yeah, seriously. Well, in your 30s, if you're in your 30s or older, you will know, like it's almost nearly impossible to eat out every meal if it, if especially you're French out for like especially five French days. Food. Yeah, all the butter and all the oil and the lactose, yeah. like that really adds up the cheese. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah we had to make our own food. Yeah, so we didn't eat out every meal during mm -hmm. the trip. And then finally, before we went back to the chalet to hang out for the rest of the day, yeah. uh, good tip for you is if you if you aren't bringing your own ski or snowboarding gear, go to the rental shop the day before you actually uh, start skiing. Right. That way you get yourself measured, you get your gear that you're comfortable with, yeah. and then you can either bring it back to where you're staying or some of the rental shops will let you keep it there so that the next day you can just show up with the gear or, yeah. or pick up the gear and go straight to the mountain rather than waiting in the morning for, a, like for your gear to be uh, uh, suited up for you. Yeah, the reason why we did that and we learned from our friends to do that is because it does take a long time. Like it almost took us like an hour and a half for everybody to get geared up, sized up, and then like pay for your equipment and stuff. And so if you were, when we were doing it, it was around like 5 p.m. So nobody was in the shop and we were 
you know, the only ones got the there. best service to making it, and then you know, like you can ask you questions it, about uh, you know what what brand or what type yeah. of gear is better for your whatever your your skill set is. And if it was uncomfortable, there was like no pressure. Like you had lots of time to like swap to another one or another set or upgrade mm -hmm. to a better equipment. Um, but if you were to do that, like first thing in the morning when you go skiing, like the shop is full of people who are skiing that day and probably. F getting fitted like last minute so there would be long lineups and stuff so highly recommend doing it the yeah. day before so i guess the rest of the first day we just kind of chilled in the yeah. um in the cabin we didn't even eat dinner because we bought all those groceries and one of our friends made this huge meat and cheese board and we literally just ate yep. the meat and cheese board for like basically for the rest of the day and we were so full from so much meat and cheese and french food that like yeah we didn't even go out for dinner so yeah we were also tired right we woke up we all woke up around 4 a.m so that we get to the airport <laughs> by 5 because our flight was at 7 yeah. and it was delayed so you know it was a long travel day so we just hang, hung out at home had, a, had some snacks and then we passed out early so that we have all the energy for the next day our first day of skiing all right, so it's day number two, our first day of skiing. So yeah, as, as I mentioned earlier, um, there wasn't any snow in Morazine, and by the time <laughs> it was the second day for our first day of skiing, there was still no snow in Morazine. Yeah. However, we did some research as a group, and there is a gondola called Super Morazine Gondola from mm -hmm. Morazine that takes you to the bigger resort in uh, I guess the bigger resort in the French Alps called Port du Soleil. It only takes a couple minutes like, from more. Let's say eight minutes tops. Yeah, so it's very quick. It's not like you're like going for like 15 yeah. minutes to get to another place. Yeah, you don't have to drive or anything. No. And then Port du Soleil is basically a big resort that kind of connects between the French side of the Alps and also the Swiss side of the Alps. You'll see in the footages uh, the, the different places that we checked out. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the moment we kept going higher and higher on the gondola, yeah, there were a lot of snow. Yeah. So um, just so you know, I think this whole season, I mean, we didn't even talk about when, what oh, yeah. time of season we went. We went in... Second week of January. Yeah, we went second week of January. And apparently, usually, like, people here actually don't go to ski resorts until February or March. That's kind of like more in season, yeah. which we didn't realize because coming from Vancouver, like January is usually the coldest month. Um, but yeah, so it is a little bit like of a delay. So if you're expecting to go, maybe do it in February, um, which is a prime time. But in the whole season, we heard that Morzine, like all of these lower, uh, like lower altitude, lower altitude mountains, um, they are like very warm, <laughs> um, unreasonably warm this year. So if you are booking something, um, I would say like maybe uh, like next time we book, we would definitely book somewhere that's yeah, higher February. definitely elevation. Hell higher elevation. Probably go for early Feb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're in Morzine. <laughs> uh, we just got here yesterday, and we're about to ski for the first time on a mountain today. Yep, we're just lining up for our ski classes right now. We are unfortunately in Morzine, but Morzine runs aren't open today because there's not enough snow. It's and we're going to Avorias. Yeah, we're going to go to Avorias and we'll yeah. try our best to film while learning how to ski. We'll see about that. <laughs> I can't believe it. I think we've been snow skiing for like four hours now. Yeah. More. We started at 10, right? 11, 10, 11. Yeah, I think 10. Probably 10, 11, 12. Yeah, it's already 2.30. One, two, it's been four hours, so. This is the we... end of the run that before we head for lunch. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a lot of footages of us skiing because well, we're learning how to ski and we're not confident to freaking hold the Oh phone. yeah, look, it is hard to see right now. So right here it's okay, but as you get higher, it was super misty or um, foggy and it was really hard to see. So it was actually kind of scary for a little bit, but we're just taking a mini break mid Yeah, we got mountain. our wish, wanted it to snow and we got the snow. I know, look at all this fluff. It is beautiful. So yeah, so we went to Port du Soleil and yeah, the, the, our concerns were resolved. There was definitely a lot of snow mm -hmm. and yeah, we, we hopped on for the first time on our I skis, know. down the mountain we went, and yeah. yeah, how did you feel? Um, It was exhilarating, it was definitely like really fun. 
um, especially in the beginning. I was a little bit nervous, but like it was more so like I was having a good time because like, wow, the views were amazing. And um, it just felt nice to be on the mountains again. We haven't skied or snowboarded since, well, for me, since we moved uh, to Amsterdam. So it's been like three and a half years mm -hmm. since I've been on a mountain. Yeah. So it was really fun for me and I had a good time. Luckily, our friend Nicole, um, again, shout out to Nicole. She was like our savior this whole trip because she is a very advanced skier and she's the one who taught us um, in Snow World how to ski. And so she basically stayed with us this whole day yeah. um, just to like give us lessons on the different runs. Uh, three of us were kind of newbie uh, skiers on this trip and so she just kind of stayed with us and taught us all of the basic skills yeah. and I learned so yeah. much on this first day and I think by the middle of the day I was getting like you know semi comfortable like I know I could get down the mountain it's just whether I was doing it yeah. properly or not at yeah. this point so we wrapped up our skiing by three so we started around nine mm -hmm. wrapped up by three and the hours of skiing in in, in I guess in the, in the Alps are quite short it Here basically anyways, basically yeah. from 8 a.m to 4, 5, 5 p.m so by the time it was 3 p.m we hadn't had lunch yet so uh, as a group we went to one of well we discovered and found one of the popular opera ski location called the foley deuce yeah and it's one of the and we realized that it's one of the best places to i guess party after a day of skiing mm -hmm. but they also have decent food so i think i ordered a cheeseburger the first day i actually loved what i ordered yeah. so i got like what was supposed to be like the toppings with like the melted cheese that you put on top, raclette, I guess. But they ran out of raclette cheese that day. So um, I just had like the toppings. Like honestly, I just wanted baked potatoes. Mm -hmm. And I think I got some like veggies or something like that. And then I got a salad, like a chicken yeah, Caesar yeah. salad on the side. It was all delicious, yeah. honestly. And it was great feel for the day. Yeah, yeah so good, decent food. Um, it was a good party. But I think we all agree, we all thought like, hey, let's save that the big upper ski party at this place the next day. Well, to be fair, we couldn't. Like it was snowing yeah. so hard that the there there wasn't much of a party outside because because it was snowing so hard, most people were actually indoors. True. Um, some people kind of tried to stay outdoors because it was so full on the inside. But we had like some great seats on the inside, true. so we just kind of stayed in. True, 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 true. So it was like too cold to be outside. So too cold. Yeah, I was miserable yeah. outside. So then uh, around four four thirty, we ski down to the the gondola that would take us down yeah. to, back to the Morzine city. So we found a live music bar mm -hmm. called the Cavern Bar. And yeah, we had fun uh, having a few drinks, uh, listening to a live band play. I think the band was from Ireland, right? I, think, I don't know. I think they were an Irish band. And yeah, we were, it was they fun were... listening to some like old classics. It was so fun, yeah. Like, you know, like listening to Mr. Brightside from The Killers. And I had a request for a Garth Brooks song. <laughs> it was nice to hear some uh, classics that we haven't heard in a long time. Yeah, it was definitely a good time. And I love live bands. It just like really... Um, brings a whole bar together I feel like so everyone's just like singing and dancing it was yeah. so cool to like see because I know there were people from all over yeah. Europe in that bar like it was definitely not just French people so it was actually mostly British people we yeah, realized yeah. throughout this trip like so many British people were in Morzine it's kind of crazy it yeah. felt like we were in the UK yeah, during the exactly. whole trip and then after that, we went to dinner. Yeah, uh, put the, I'll put the name on the screen because yeah. I don't want to butcher the pronunciation. <laughs> uh, great restaurant, also close to our um, our chalet. Yeah. And yeah. What did we eat? I don't even remember. Uh, we'll play the clips, but uh, we had that dish where we eat the hot plate. Oh, that restaurant. Yeah. Oh my gosh, the hot restaurant. Okay, highly recommend when you're cabin, like eating at the cabin or the ski village area to wear an inner shirt, Lay like layers, or so. because, because it's so cold on the outside, you're probably wearing like warm stuff. When you get into the restaurants, oh my gosh, especially if it's a fondue restaurant or any kind of like restaurant with hot plates, it gets so hot and steamy in there, like wear a tank top or wear a t-shirt <laughs> yeah. just to like have the option to be like cooler. Yeah. Um, but anyways, it was a feast that we ordered. We yeah. usually with this group, we're all foodies. And so we like to like share dishes where we can or make sense. Yeah. And so this like restaurant, we just shared all of the Everything. entrees and the main dishes. Yeah. Um, we had like these amazing like sizzling beef thing and like, just like everything. 
They we had like duck and chicken and yeah, everything. Yeah. So it was awesome. Yeah. So that was pretty much the f second day, but after the first day of skiing. Yeah. Oh, I didn't have, I don't have any cliffs of this, but if you're in town in Morzine yeah. and it happens to be January, February, yeah. they do have like a local semi, I think they're semi-professional ice hockey team. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it, the arena was also next to our chalet. So uh, me and the couple guys went to the game and I mean, it's, it's like, it's cheap, fun entertainment if you yeah. have nothing to do on, on a weeknight in Morzine. So, yeah, totally. So yeah. All right, day number three, second day of skiing. Mm -hmm. So I decided to swap out for the second day from ski to snowboard. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the, the place that we went to were super chill about it, super accommodating. So I had my snowboards and then... You didn't have to pay extra. They had to pay extra. Like, it's pretty much the same cost that goes skiing or snowboarding. Yeah. So yeah, I, I decided to go snowboarding. So a couple of guys also were snowboarding. So the three of us were snowboarding and our friend Nicole was skiing. So we actually went ahead first in the morning to go on our, uh, on our um, adventure. That's where we went between the French side of the Alps and the Swiss side of the Alps. So that it was really cool to see like, oh, we started in France in one run. And then when the run finishes, you, you end up in Switzerland. That's the perk of having that Port du Soleil yes. like, uh, pass is like you have unlimited access to pretty much all of the gondolas. So you don't have to like when you're on the mountain, yeah. you don't have to be worried like, do I get yeah, access yeah, to this one or point. not? You have lots of ways to get around the mountain and also down the mountain. Yeah, I, yeah, I would. Yeah, that's a good point. We sh we definitely recommend getting the the full Port du Soleil ski pass. Do we mention the price? Of the uh, pass? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention it was roughly hundred and seventy two euros per person mm -hmm. for three days of skiing slash the warden. So mm -hmm. that's quite. I mean, it's not. This is not a cheap sport, but. For this sport, that's quite an affordable it's price for skiing. It's super affordable because back home in Vancouver, uh, I heard a Whistler pass this year, and not even for the full day, like for a half day, like morning run, um, it would be like more than two hundred Canadian dollars. Yeah. So for one day, well, not even one day, like half a day, couple yeah. hours. So, like this is like three full days of skiing. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Super I affordable. Yeah, and then because I'm not, I'm not saying I'm a great snowboarding, but I'm comfortable because I've done this a while, for a while now. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were able to go on more like the harder runs, more mm -hmm. steeper slopes, and I would have never been able to go down those slopes on my skis. Yeah. So it just it was uh, really really fun to like you know take pictures, look at the different views. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had a really good time. Um, but yeah, Cheryl, you decided to change up your plans for the second day as well. Yeah, I did. I had a fun time on the first day of skiing, but then um, my muscles were so sore. I've never actually consecutively snowboarded like multiple days in a row. Usually when you go to Vancouver, it's like a day trip kind of yeah. thing. So you snowboard for one day and you know, you don't go until like the next week or something. So um, I was so sore, like my calves were killing me. Um, and so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to take a day break um, from skiing. And I was just going to hang out in this beautiful cabin mm -hmm. that we rented. One of our friends, actually, he um, had like a toe thing, like his Minor boots. injury. Yeah, his boots was like hurting his toe a lot and his nail was hurting. And so he had like a minor like emergency thing at the at the doctor clinic and so i just hung out with him we went to get coffee yeah. and walked around town just to explore the city a little bit and it was a great time honestly mm -hmm. so and then by the end of the night we after well, it was not the night it was late after <laughs> by, the, by yeah. the time it's the late afternoon yeah i mean it was it was getting darker by the end of the run of the day because by 5 p.m., all of the runs are pretty much closed. Yeah. So we, yeah, we, we, we stay in contact as a group. So around 3 p.m., we all yeah. decided, let's go back to the La Folie Deuce because A, it's not pouring snow anymore. Yeah, and two, like the weather day. was pretty good. Yeah, it was good weather yeah. that day. So yeah, we all showed up there again. And then yeah, we had food again. Well, you guys skied and snowboarded there. Me and Jason, oh, yes. the friend, we didn't have our skis that day. Oh, yes. And so, and he wasn't able to ski because of his toe thing. So we actually hiked up that mountain, like by foot. Like it was actually more walking than I expected. I was really hoping we can somehow take the gondola by foot, but that was not possible. Like you <laughs> literally have to hike up 
Yeah. Not the run, but there is like a driveway path that you can walk mm. up from. So, anyways, we like hiked all the way to La Folie Douce, which is possible if you are not skiing. Yeah. Um, and then we met up there. Yeah. So we had our apres ski party at La Folie Douce that day. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was really packed. Um, good music, good DJ. Also, they had live music too. I did a little bit of res uh, research afterwards, like oh, because we thought the singers were. Quite so good. good. A couple of them like had been on the Voice France version mm. before, so I don't know if they won, but they were on the show. So by being on the show, you know, there's definitely talent there. Yeah, they're like trained. Yeah. yeah so we, we had a lot of fun. There were moments where we were dancing on the tables, like your classic après ski party. <laughs> it was actually really fun. Okay, as a person who doesn't really party, like I'm not much of a partier, <laughs> um, and I had a lot of fun during that that little like. Like during what do you recall? During that time in La Folie Deuce, like the singers were awesome. There were like drinks available everywhere. Like there was outdoor bars yeah. that you can order from, um, and it was a great sunny day. And everyone was just like yeah. like having a good time. Yeah. So one tip though uh, that we learned from the first day of skiing is that you actually need to like when they say like the lifts close at five, like they close at five, like. We were one minute past five on that first day, and we ended up not being able to take the gondola, the gondola. all the way back to Morzine. So we actually, well, thankfully, there is a bus that takes you um, from the mountain that we were to back to Morzine. Yeah. Um, so we took that option, and on this uh, second day of skiing, we, took it guess, again. we just decided to take it again because the party went on past 5 p.m. Yeah. Um, but if you do, like one of our friends wanted to just take the gondola. He really hates the bus. Taking the bus. Yeah. Um, in that case, you better like start leaving earlier, like around four thirty, or at least half an hour before um, the you know that the gondola closes, yeah. or else you might not be able to make it back, yeah. and you'd have to take the bus yeah. back. So, <laughs> but yeah, TLDR, um, definitely go to La Folie Deuce. Yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah, I decent food, it. good party, good good music, and there is no cover. All right, so this is. Day number four is day number three for skiing. Yeah. So yeah. Our last day. Our last day of skiing. Of skiing, yeah. Full yes. day, yeah. So actually on this day, everyone, including myself, who wasn't skiing, swapped to a ski on the last day. So this mm -hmm. was the first time on the trip that all of us were skiing. Yeah. And yeah, it was a lot of fun to like go down a run and a slope together on skis. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It was a beautiful day. We finally had some nice sun going on. It wasn't snowing as hard. But there was still but there was still powder of snow from the previous days. Yeah, it was it was really awesome. Yeah. Uh, some highlights on this last day is there was some like what do they I don't know what they call it, but it was like a treehouse area, like mm -hmm. where um, there was like sections on the run where really you can just cute. venture off and you can ski into a treehouse. Yeah. And then and like some slides. Yeah, yeah. So we like got kids. up on our skis when we entered it. And we had our, like a like a snack break. Yeah, and honestly, it would have been great for a picnic. Like if you packed snacks and like picnic stuff, like that would be the most perfect place to yeah. like take a break and just like lay out your picnic. Yeah, it was just gorgeous. Like looking out into the mountains, I was just like, I just felt so grateful and peaceful and calm and like. I couldn't believe my eyes. I couldn't believe that we actually made it there. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It was just like insane to me to think that like, wow, we're skiing in France. Yeah. Like what? Or it could be in Switzerland. Or they can go back to France. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was really incredible. And yeah, that was a, I would say in terms of skiing, yeah. that was a very successful trip. Totally. Fun couple of days. So we, yeah, we had our last dinner at, I'll, try, I'll say, I'll, I'll try to pronounce this one, La Avalanche. Okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. Sounds... I'll put the name up there. Okay. Uh, but, and it was a new restaurant. I think it had just opened in the last four to five months of when the moment this oh, video came out. So really? it was a very new restaurant. It was very modern. Yeah. It was like modern French food. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, great food as always. Similar type of food as the other restaurants, mm -hmm. just a different take on it at La, La Avalanche. Mm -hmm. And oh yeah, we didn't mention this, but this trip was originally planned kind of for Cheryl's birthday. <laughs> like the difference of her birthday and the trip was maybe a, a one week. One week so yeah. it's basically her it's birthday trip. So uh, here's yeah. a clip of uh, us having a little uh, birthday dessert cake <laughs> celebration. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.
So a little amazing. happy birthday for Cheryl. <laughs> uh, and yeah, that was that was it afterwards. Some yeah. of a few of us went out because it was a Friday night for that last night. Yeah, but, but um, most of us were like, actually TMI so bloated and full <laughs> from that meal. Like I don't even think I ate that much, but I was so bloated from I think maybe just like three days of yeah. French food. As we mentioned, French food's heavy. It's great, but it's heavy. <laughs> it's so heavy. It's just like too much for your gut and your digestive system. So by that last meal in like France, my body was just like, no more, Cheryl, no yeah. more. <laughs> All right, so now we're in the final day of the trip. Um, so that the means- The day we fly back. The day we yeah. fly back. So we didn't ski. We could have skied. We were thinking about it, doing like a, just a half day morning skiing, but you know what? No, we had too... to um, check out of the Airbnb by yeah. 11. And it so... was possible, like it could, yeah. it, but I think it would have been too much work and too rushed. Yeah. So all of us agreed to do the next best thing is actually leave the chalet a bit earlier, drive back to Geneva and hit up a spa. Oh my gosh, you guys, it was the best. It was like a hammam style um, spa. And so there were lots of like different pools and like an outdoor like jacuzzi, yep. like hot tub kind of situation. There were drinks and food that you can get. It was just like the best time. Like we spent like probably a good two hours yeah. there. I think you can more. only spend two hours there. There's a time cap on, or time really? cap on. Yeah, yeah, time limit. <gasps> oh, I didn't know or that. Or you, you pay up front mm. for your oh, two yeah, hours. Yeah, right, right, right. And if you stay beyond that, they'll charge you in addition, like yeah. by the minute. Highly recommend it. I felt brand spanking new right. after that spa. Like all of my sore calves, everything was gone after that spa. Yeah. And it was so close to the airport actually. So it's actually perfect for these ski trips because right on the last day yes. before you head to your flight, you just go to the spa and then you're like all spanked brand spanking new for your flight back home. So uh, I had a great time, highly recommend the place. Um, and that's pretty much that's it. Pretty we much hopped it. on the flight back home, another two hours and we were back in Amsterdam. Back Wasn't to, that that Back to flat Amsterdam, no mountains in sight. Um, yeah. But yeah, as I mentioned, great trip, great skiing, great snowboarding, yeah. good company. What were some of your favorite moments on the trip? Oh, it's so hard, probably, that last day of skiing and I felt like I like started feeling more comfortable and then we and then the sun came out oh my gosh that was a magical moment we finally saw like everything because the visibility was like super clear and I was just like that moment of like calm and mm -hmm. peace and like just feeling so so grateful that we were doing this and we had the luxury of being able to do this from Amsterdam yeah. like um, it was amazing. That was really cool. Um, the Foley Deuce? The Foley Deuce, yes. I, I thought that was really good fun. Like it's like not pretentious. Yeah. It's a good vibe. Uh, fairly priced for like a more um, nicer spot too. So I wouldn't yeah. say it's super expensive either. I think the company was really good. I think yeah. we didn't really talk about the people on this trip during yeah. this vlog. It was just like, I think it's really important when you're going on these um, group trips to be with people that you feel comfortable with and like you have the same kind of energy levels and like interest yeah. levels. Um, we're just all kind of very similar people and we're all expats too. So it was just, um, it worked out well. Yeah. We had a good time. Uh, the home cooked meals at the chalet. Oh. Yes. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> would you go back to the French shops again? Would you go back to more, or would you go back to more zine? Um, I don't know if I would go back to Morzine necessarily. When we went to the city that was at, um, well, the Fo Foley Du city, that oh, was oh, actually that really- That was Avorias. Avorias, it was actually very cute and that's where the snow was. So maybe I would consider going back there and just staying there next time. Yeah, um, but... yeah I agree. I would go back to the French Alps. There's actually a lot of other cities like Avorias. There's also Laguettes. Sorry, I'm not pronouncing these places yeah. correct. But uh, they're nearby Morzine that we could consider staying next time. Mm -hmm. So the French Alps is definitely a yes. Um, I'd also be interested in checking out the, uh, the, uh, the resorts in Austria. Yeah, for sure. Like, oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. So is this going to be an annual thing now? Oh, I hope so. We used to go on annual, like, just snowboarding day trips when we were back in Vancouver. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess now that we've opened up this... Yeah. Um, skiing thing, especially in, in Europe, I would love to do this yearly. So we'll see if we can make it happen. Yeah. Yeah.
Well, that, that is it. That's the recap of our experiences going skiing in the French Alps. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. If you did enjoy it, remember to give us a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>